This week's show is sponsored by Whimsies by Wellness. How do so many lost dogs manage to find their way home? In 2016, four-year-old collie Pero ran away from his new home in Cumbria only to turn up 12 days later in his original home village in Wales, 240 miles away. In World War I, their impressive navigation abilities led to messenger dogs being used as couriers to deliver sensitive information across battlegrounds. Wolves, believe it or not, the ancestors of domestic dogs, have extraordinary large home ranges of 150 to 200 square kilometres. And until recently, science has assumed that dogs use landmark and sense to find their way around. But is that true? Or can dogs, like birds, navigate using the Earth's magnetic field? Welcome to the Dog Scholar. <laughs> Magnetoreception is not a baddie on Guardians of the Galaxy. It is the ability to sense the Earth's magnetic field. Now, it's actually a widespread phenomenon in the animal kingdom, especially for navigation, like birds and bees do it. But do dogs have special cells in their eyes that can allow them to detect the Earth's magnetic field? Well, scientists looked at this and it turns out they can. Dogs have got a specialised cell called cryptochrome 1A in their eyes. They're embedded deep in photoreceptors, which are special cells in the dog's retina that converts light into signals that then get sent to the brain. So dogs have got a magnetic sense within their visual systems with a hotline straight in their brain that means they can perceive the Earth's magnetic field. Now, it's not present in many mammals. This study looked at the retinas of 90 mammals and they found them in dog-like carnivores like dogs, wolves and foxes too. Isn't that incredible? Dogs can see the Earth's magnetic field. That is mad. Your, your, your mind kind of goes to try and visualise what that would even yeah. look like. The only thing I can kind of come up with is, you know, when you look through but not someone else's binoculars and it's a bit blurry and you twist it until it comes into focus. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe they favour going a certain direction and it's a bit out of focus and then all of a sudden it's there. Maybe it's really trippy, like hallucinogenic type psychedelic things and like people will have an aura and depending on where they are on the Earth's magnetic, magnetic field, they'll have like a, a different kaleidoscope around them. How do you know? How does somebody actually know for sure that that cell embedded deep within a photoreceptor allows the animal to perceive the magnetic uh, forces of the Earth? Well, I can answer that because Sab's just told us. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know, Thank you, Danny. How do you know, how do you know what I see? I don't know what you see. You don't know well, what I, do. I see. see. I'm able you're to tell you. I'm able to <laughs> yeah. tell you what I see. But if you're talking about a non-communicative animal subject, how do we know? Mm. Animals that use the same kind of they have the same kind of cells in their eyes. They use that to navigate. You can see how dogs might be using the Earth's magnetic field to navigate. But how different must the world look to dogs? I wonder. You know, when you're a kid and you and you get you go through your little phase of getting obsessed with magnets and you're like, Ooh, and you always put like the positive to the positive and it repels. I wonder yeah. if that looks different. I wonder if they like. Ooh. What you get a couple of dogs walk together yeah. to one another yeah. and both end up yeah, firing yeah. off yeah. in the opposite I wonder if you were to do that in front of your dog with two magnets, you'd yeah. be like, Whoa, what are you doing? I wonder if they've got like a blind. You know, like you've got visual blind spots in your eyes and you yeah. can't see particular stuff. I wonder if they've got that, but for magnetism. So maybe. They they can only see magnetism in a particular way. Maybe like it's only their peripheral vision, so it's mm. not too distracting. Like Superman can't see through lead. Apparently yeah, so. Like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, sorry, yeah. Yeah, do you so know? Yeah. Do you chat to him? Don't want to, don't want to give away his weaknesses. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks for just yeah. ru ruining the earth. No, yeah. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine we had like a um, like a solar flare that caused an EMP. I wonder if the dogs we we wouldn't know. We just go, oh, the lucky has gone. But imagine they're like. Sky's falling. Do you know what I mean? They can see like chaos. They look like the northern lights yeah. just like of, of magnetism. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. Yeah. It's mad. But dogs would use that kind of thing to locate things, right? So, I mean, we just talked about wolves in the introduction and how big their range is. And we talked about birds and then finding their way home. So maybe they used it to scavenge and hunt. But ancient people used to scavenge. Maybe we used to have that and then we lost it. Packs of wolves generally don't cross over with other packs, don't they? And they have like territory and they'll yeah. they'll howl and let others know that they're there. Maybe it was it comes from that. They 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 can navigate their territory and know yeah. where they are at any particular moment. That's a time. huge range, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? 200 it is, yeah, it is. I mean I, I would say I've seen that, bigger. I would say that where you're talking about wolves, as you just hit hit on there, wolves howl for a reason, yeah. you know, to communicate with one another mm. and to also, you know, undoubtedly yeah. can't know for sure because you can't ask them, but undoubtedly mm. signify territory. Territorial yeah. range for non-canid animals, 
that that sort of like that that capacity to be able to use the Earth's magnetism as far as we believe um, would lead to advantages like to return to familiar breeding grounds, to return to oh, you know spawning and things like that, or to return to um, feeding grounds, you know, or, or where you see like you, with, with, with laying, laying turtles food? laying yeah. eggs on yeah. a particular beach from all over the you know whales cr crossing oceans to meet their mates in certain areas. I don't really see how that applies with a dog. With a domestic dog? I don't think they can swim oceans. That's quite no, a No, no. I know, but, <laughs> Maybe but, but, really I mean, it's in the same you know, sense that you don't see how, like, your, your appendix applies to us, but we used it once upon a time. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Maybe so. I don't... I, I've never seen anything that that would say to me that my dog can circumnavigate the globe, you know, <laughs> successfully, or that it goes to a spawning ground of a particular... And, you know, if we think that we've only des domesticated them for, like, between perhaps fifteen to 30,000 years, that's not... That's a blip, isn't it, mm. on an evolutionary timeline for something to have become redundant. Maybe. Well, yeah. I'm glad your curiosity is piqued, gentlemen, because another group of scientists went about this another way. Okay. They looked at how sensitive dogs were to the Earth's magnetic field. Over the course of two years, dogs were watched when they were pooing and peeing. Ladies and gentlemen, science, <laughs> modern day science. What'd you do today, love? Just watched a couple of dogs shitting, a couple of pissing, had me dinner, you know what I mean? Well, it wasn't just the watching, you'll be pleased to know. They went even more into this. They watched the dogs when they were having a poo and a pee, and then they recorded their positions as well. Do you know what, that's a story of my life. <laughs> Everyone sees the protection dogs and the behaviour mob, but the reality of my life is just watching dog go for a shit. Come there on, we go. go. And shit. all you had to do was record which direction the dogs were pointing in, and you'd have basically had science, my friend. Wow. They looked at how often dogs would spontaneously align the direction of their bodies with the Earth's magnetic field when they were peeing and pooing. And they cross-referenced that, very importantly, with data on the Earth's magnetic field strength and direction on that day. Now, they found out of 1,893 defecations and 5,582 urinations, under calm magnetic field conditions... <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? That, hang on, this is science, my Don't little fun sponge see. in the corner. Someone's paid for this. Yeah, yeah. This is someone's job. Yeah, yeah. Someone's, someone's funded it. Yeah, they are to excrete with the body being aligned to the north-south axis. Mm. And they avoided the east-west axis mm. altogether. Look at Jamie's face. No. When the magnetic field was unstable, those yeah. directional preferences disappeared. So they definitely preferred to be lining up in a particular polar orientation, but they were also sensitive to changes in the polarity of the Earth's magnetic field. Got loads of, like, Science, gang my friends. Gangster dogs in me head, like, you know, north side, not about east or west side. <laughs> Okay. There you go, folks. Grab yourself a compass. Go and have a look at your dog having a pee or crap and yeah. see whether or not you can, you can have the biggest study yeah. in the world here we, if everybody does it and listen, reports listen. their findings. Yeah. We're all dog people here. We're all dog people. And we can all share and bask in the... The, the shit side of owning a dog where you're stood in the pissing down rain going, go for a poo, go for a poo. <laughs> now you can take a compass and make a night of it. Well, that's and true. what I would say is, if that compass was the size of my garden, Flint would shit on every uh, uh, part of that compass because he does like this mad... Like we could have you seen that um, that trend that went on YouTube, Stanky Leg, when you, they do that with the leg. That's how Flint shits. He literally just <laughs> spins around the circle. Yeah, and, and yeah. it's it's everywhere. I'm like, I'm, maybe he doesn't navigate. Maybe he just drops pellets of shit to find his way home. It's it's everywhere. It drives me mad. I'm walking around. A lot of them do it while they're all. running in a yeah, straight yeah, line as well. And they do it. And the pumpkin yeah. will do that. No, you know, yeah. she'll she'll do it and go, do it and go, do it and go. Jimmy's a spinner, like a walnut whip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there was a thing. It's I mean, so I, 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 <laughs> isn't it? The, yeah, when you're in public, and you're like, <laughs> there was <laughs> picking it up again and again and again. When I was younger, I don't actually know if I mentioned this on an earlier episode or not, but when I was younger, I lived down near a uh, harbour in Newquay, and I was forever fascinated about when I used to go down to because I got fascinated about things like this, and there was dog poo stuck on the harbour wall. Okay, about two foot off the ground, two and a half foot off the ground or whatever. There's some dog poo stuck on the harbour wall routinely by the lobster pots, and I couldn't understand it. And then one day I caught this fisherman's terrier, Jack Russell terrier, that had walked up to the harbour wall on its front legs and poo against the wall. Oh, yeah, and all I could think is... What, like a handstand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. exactly, wait, exactly wait, that. Wait, it's, it's, it's not yeah. that it's, uncommon. There are no, other, no. other people yeah. that I've worked with whose dogs do a similar thing. Gravity on, on, is slightly unhelpful in that. What if you're well, too, do it on like a too plant. far up yeah, and yeah. it lands on his face? Yeah, so a lot of people no, say usually that... usually just they, kisses his balls as it hits the floor. <laughs> but people would say they prefer to do it on a sort of raised surface. My dog will only poo on bushes or something like that. But my, from an evolutionary perspective, I thought, well, the only thing that I could sort of like come up with with that is that it makes rivals believe that you're larger than 
than you are oh, yeah. as a oh, Jack yeah, Russell yeah, Terrier. You know, I'm not, I'm not going near. You know, wherever it is, yeah. you know, look yeah. at the size of that. It, yeah. it must be huge. It's all yeah. in I mean, yeah. if it's the object though, and it's high up, but it's that big. Yeah. 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 But that harbour wall must be forever facing north and south, yeah. Yeah. east and west, yeah, must yeah. it? But... And that'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, oh, we're lost. Where do we go? Wait there, Snoopy. <laughs> yeah. Go for the poo. I've got this. Don't worry. Yeah, do your Put your stick away. Don't worry about your shadows. Snoopy's got it. <laughs> Tibetan maybe. guides just taking a dog with them and a bag of yeah. food that will make yeah, them yeah. go routine yeah, yeah. that way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Tribes yeah. in the a Amazon. Prunes and a chihuahua. Yeah. Right. Tribes in the Amazon. Right. Sorry. Sorry, I'm late back. Love, the dog wouldn't shit. <laughs> yeah. Actually, could you train your dog if they can perceive the Earth's magnetic field? Could you train your dog to act like a compass? What's interesting, what I'll, I've observed with Flint is when, we've been, when I've worked them as a gun dog, I might send them, I might send them into, into like a woods and he'd be gone for 10 minutes, but he's trained. I, I, don't, I don't have to worry. I know he's on, he's on scent and he'll come back when he's got what he needs to get. He will always, and I'm talking vast areas. He can't hear me. He's out 10 minutes for a dog running at paces. They're covering some ground yeah. and he'll, he'll always find his way back to me when I'm silent. Now you might say, okay, well, he's following a trailer scent. He, he can smell it. But he comes back in all different, weird and wonderful ways. So maybe there's a little bit of that going on. Who knows? We don't. I have no don't idea do. how he finds his way back. No. Yeah. So I've got a theory on this. I think a dog's diet could have an impact because a diet that's rich in iron, I think, could actually increase their sensitivity to magnetic fields. Now, hear me out, because iron sulfides and oxides are actually ferromagnetic. And I think that could be a new avenue for pet nutrition research. Mm, Spinach. Popeye yeah. dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week's show is sponsored by Whimsies by Wellness. A good dental chew should be a win-win. Your dog gets a treat that they can take off to a corner and chew on, and you get a significant improvement in their breath and all-round oral health. The Whimsies antler gives your dog a healthy challenge that keeps them engaged and chewing for longer, all while supporting their dental health. Look out for Whimsies in pet stores or order online by clicking the link in the description. How do dogs find their way home? Is it the Earth's magnetic field that they're using to get there? Well, one study looked at this and dogs were let loose to roam in a forest wearing a GPS collar and a little camera. And after a while, the owners who were completely out of sight had to call their dogs back and the dogs had to work out how to find them. Most of the dogs would start their return trips in a very similar way. They would run about 20 meters along the north-south axis and scientists called it a compass run. Then about 59% of the dogs tracked back along their outbound route with scent, 32% scouted a new route using landmarks and other things that they could see and about 8% used a mixture. So this study found that the Earth's magnetic field could in fact provide a universal reference frame for a dog's navigation systems. It's a bit like a mental map with a magnetic compass that the dog could then use to find its way home. You know, individuality, you know, the individual nature of the dog, because this is all well and good, but there's hundreds of thousands of dogs that get lost. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I was just I was that was just gonna bring me to my point. I was gonna say yeah. is like humans this like you know, some kids are better at playing football than other kids. Maybe some dogs are better at doing that than others. Yeah. I also have another vision of Jamie's dogs watching this at home going, You always put us down. Yeah. <laughs> Here he goes, look, misery guts, misery guts. <laughs> um and I would also say like on this this research where they're fitted with a GPS and a camera. How do you know when the dog's using scent and using sight? Yeah, that's that's you the don't. difficult one. That's, that's the don't, difficult you? one. You yeah. don't, you know. So really, it's running yeah. in that direction, and I can't I tell mean, you they whether say it's the, following. They say the cells are there, but maybe, maybe the, the when they're in line with that with that axis, maybe that smells a bit different. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, was that there was no effect of body height in this study. Now, the reason that's relevant is it would affect the degree to which the dog's view would be limited. So bearing in mind there's a lot of vegetation, if the dogs are solely relying on sight, for example, you would expect the taller dogs that could see over the vegetation to be able to do that more or better than the dogs that were kind of lower and stuck in the vegetation. Well, I did a, a memory retrieve video, which is basically for anybody who doesn't know, you take your dog and your dog's toy, you put your dog out somewhere, you take your dog away from where the toy is, and then you send them back to find it. So they are theoretically using memory in order to locate that toy. And I recorded one with Sherlock, um, one of my dogs, and I think the distance was a, around about 900 metres, maybe more than that. I think it might have been 1,100 metres to the toy. Uh, to where the toy was, or, or, or yeah, it was around about that, and uh, and I sent him. Now he sent. You couldn't see it 
because it's 900 yeah. metres away and it's across n natural land, etc. What he needed to do was go straight out and then turn right at a pile of rocks. So there were a pile of rocks on this right-hand turn where I then went on a couple of hundred metres and put the toy down, walked him back. What he actually did was he went out and he went past the pile of rocks and just kept going in a straight line on the north-south axis. No. He, says with, <laughs> he says with an element of cynical sarcasm. Must have been following Google Maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, must have been. Um, must at which point he turned, around, he turned around, came back, and then turned at the point of rocks, uh, the, where the rocks, switched into hunting. Yeah. So sent him for the thing, realised where it was, went straight up the track, a couple of hundred metres and found it. I found that particularly, when we talked uh, earlier on about you, you were saying that you like to watch your dogs and see what your dogs are doing. I found that a particular interest because it was coming from a different direction. So if it was memory, you know, yeah. me memory would be that it's turning on the right-hand side, but it was actually, he came from the different yeah, from direction side, to turn yeah. on the left-hand side, yeah. Which, was it the sight of the pile of rocks? If it was the sight of the pile of rocks, why didn't he turn the first time? Or was it wind direction yeah. bringing the scent? Well, if it was wind direction, it's either coming in one direction or the other. Why didn't you get it the second time? If it's memory, why didn't you remember it? Do you know what I mean? So there, the, there, is, the a, there is a thing. In this study, yeah. it had highly variable wind conditions, so they kind of ruled out reliable scent navigation on yeah. that place. But I guess, given this topic, on the balance of evidence, do you think that dogs use the Earth's magnetism or not? No. I'm 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 on the fence. I'm I, I'm I'd be open to it. I mean, if science is 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 acknowledged that there is a particular cell in the eyes of like birds and other 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 mammals that you that use um, magnetic fields to navigate the earth, and they've identified that them cells up are, are there in dogs, then yeah. But what I would say is, I, I I do think that the more it's practiced, the more the more in tune and and accurate it is because, you know. A lot of dogs get lost. There's people who make livings. I, I know of a guy who's got like a 70 grand drone with thermal imaging. And as it's flying over areas where the dog's been reported, they can literally tell the difference with heat signature between a fox and a dog. Wow. Um, and he makes a bloody good living because a lot of dogs get lost. Um, <laughs> that's my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Why? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but again, bringing it back to what I said earlier, they never in the early 90s, late 80s, you, you wouldn't see your dog all day, but they come home for the tea. But is that yeah. because the dogs didn't get lost or is that because people didn't care so much and a dog was a dog? Yeah, we maybe. had more of that sort of yeah, mentality. Maybe. When I say no, by the way, just to clarify, <laughs> I'm evidentially agnostic. Okay. okay, so until somebody comes forward with stronger, yeah. more, more, it's a stronger look, evidence look, than those three yeah. studies. I, mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember um, going out with my mates. And me, me mate up the road had a dog called Judy. Um, That's a I, great name for a dog. I remember, I remember, God, off the top of my head, we must have been about three and a half miles away from home. And I remember going, there's Judy there. And then the dog still finds its way back, yeah. but it's always navigating around the, the neighbourhoods yeah. and doing its thing. So who knows? Listener questions. What have we got, Jay? Okay, so uh, we've got a question from Aaron in Tinkerbush Lane in Oxfordshire. We're so immature. <laughs> what should you do if your dog goes missing, Aaron? I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just tink a bush. Um, so there's a few there's a few things. So first of all, you're gonna have to search the area where the dog was lost. Obviously, you can shout the dog's name. You can you can um, think about what were they doing, what were they chasing. Um, when you throw things for your dog, how how long do they chase before they get fed up? Because if you've got a really really driven dog, then that chase might go on for some miles. Do you know what I mean? That's something to take into consideration. Um, Narrow down the radius and le and when you know that radius, you can leave small bits of food. Don't leave too much food because you don't want other attract other animals to that food and you don't want your dog being full because when you move over to the next stage, which is trying to trap your dog, you, you need to lay a trap and have some bait. And then if your dog's got a full belly, they're, not, they're less likely to be interested in, in, the, uh, in the bait. There's also regional groups called um, Lost Dogs. And they're on, on um, social media. You'll find them on Facebook and they cover all the different regions. And these are a really dedicated group of people that will literally come out and help you find your dogs and That's track your amazing. dogs. Yeah, as well as that, Danny, there's also another um, organisation, uh, Drone to Home. If you have a look at them as well, they've had incredible success using drone technology to be able to locate lost dogs during daytime or nighttime. So look them up, Drone to Home. Oh, I was going to say, I think... Lots of people think that microchips have got a GPS in them as no, well. And I think it's really important that people know that they don't have a GPS in them. The microchips are only to identify your dog once it's been found. But you can get GPS uh, clips to go on your dog's collar, which some people have found successful. I bet you if you kick your dogs out in the garden, I'm not saying boot them, but if you put your dogs out in the garden and went back in, they wouldn't, they wouldn't run off. They wouldn't get lost, as mine won't. Trained dogs don't run away from home. When you have a dog that's trained, let's say to a standard of where you can walk most places and your dog just follows you to heel. You don't really need to be doing much communication with your lead or, or Lauren. If your dog just follows and you've got a good recall, 
they don't tend to run away. It's untrained dogs that do that. And another one that can cause that is when you don't take the opportunity to familiarize your dog with the life they're supposed to live. For example, your dogs, unless you teach some dogs, depending on how they perceive the world, if they're nervous or not, unless you make the effort to show them that that's traffic and it's nothing to worry about. Sometimes these bangs happen and that's nothing to worry about. When a dog's in a state of flight, they're not thinking of anything but fleeing. So if they're, if they're not familiar with that and know that it's a normal part of the environment, that can send them in a state of flight and often that can lead to a dog running away. In the video I made, made the point of, I, I literally put my dogs outside. I've got a main road on the right and endless fields to the, to the left and in front. And I just closed the door and left them. And a good period of time, I fast forwarded it. And when I opened the door, they're just bouncing. Wait, waiting to see me because the world isn't really that important yeah. without me in it because I've trained me dogs. But lost dogs can survive for years on oh, the road. Yeah. So if you have lost your dog, don't give up. Yeah. What about the next question, Jay? This is a question from Maggie. And Maggie's in splat in Cornwall. <laughs> What happened well, speaking what of happened splat, Sab's just spat all over my cards. Splat! splat. <laughs> my, uh, Maddie's from, Maggie's from yeah. Spat. Yeah. Maggie's yeah. from Spat in Cornwall. <laughs> so I've actually been to Splat. Have, have you? you? Yeah, yeah. I would never just say that like that. If, if I lived there in some way, do you live? I'd go, Splat! Yeah. Like, yeah, I There's a, lo There's a lo place fa in fantastic place. Splot near where I was from. Maybe it's twinned with splat. Yeah, we used yeah. to call it splo if you were feeling very posh. Anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Silent T. Yeah. I'm from Splat. Hi, guys. Hiya, Jay. I love watching the show every Sunday morning with a cup of tea and my Yorkshire Terrier, Ian. I love that. I love that. I love it when people call dogs people names. Yeah. I, knew, I knew a golden retriever called Graham once. Oh, that's fantastic. There's a dog in our study called Gary. Oh, I love him. Well, this is Ian. Yeah. Let me, tell, let me tell you about Ian. I was wondering if you've got an experience with blind dogs. Ian is getting on a fair bit and a recent vet trip revealed that he's been blind for months. Oh. But I didn't even notice. How important is eyesight for most dogs? Does it vary by breed? That's a great question, actually. I've got a little bit of information on this. Oh. Give us your information, Jay. Well, Maggie, we're sorry to hear about Ian's sight loss. I know, oh, yeah. It is absolutely possible to work hunting dogs, working dogs, very effectively, that are blind. Really? Yep. Yeah. And there's dogs Honestly? in the there's dogs in the states. Yeah, they're a YouTube channel. If you Google it, you'll find it of hunting dogs that work through scent and through the yeah. sound of the handler command that are able to actively fulfil their role despite being blind. I've wow. seen I've seen I've seen dot blind dogs when you put them in a new home, they bump into very little things. You'd be surprised and. I feel like they're using their nose more. I feel like their nose isn't just smelling things, it's smelling how close they are to things. It kind of adapts Well, that to would that. make sense, because yeah. even with people, when you lose one particular sense, then Another. your other senses can be heightened. So yeah. that would make sense. And oh, in, ter in terms of how important is it, and does it vary with breed as well, which was another part of Maggie's question. Yeah, you yeah. get sight hounds, you get scent hounds, you get you know yeah, different absolutely. hounds that have di accentuated different features, yeah. different uh, sensory capacities to yeah. be able to use them for a working purpose. Purpose. Just that, because a dog is yeah. blind, Tinkerbell, my dog Tinkerbell, she's got one eye, lives a life of Riley, absolutely fantastic life. Plenty of people with absolutely zero eyesight whatsoever yeah. from birth or losing it partway through life, absolutely fantastic lives. It's a matter of understanding how to cope, coping and getting on. Take comfort in knowing that your dogs are really, really resilient. They, they're not like us, you know, if we lost our sight, we'd be devastated. We go through a period of, of, of depression and how am I going to focus? Dogs just get on with it. They just, they're blessed with this ability to just get on with it. And, you know, we could all learn a little yeah. something from them. And actually, the other thing I'd say, Maggie, is I know that you said that you didn't even notice, but as Jamie's just yeah. articulated, dogs can respond yeah. perfectly well without eyesight. So don't beat yourself up about that. Because yeah. if your dog was behaving the same, then you really wouldn't have noticed. So yeah. give yourself a break. Well, thank you for your listener questions. They are wonderful, as always. But if people want to get in touch, Jay, how can they do so? You can find us on social media using at Dog Scholar Podcast, or you can email podcast at at thedogscholar.com. And that's all we've got time for this week. And if you've enjoyed the show, then please do share it with a friend because if they don't like it, maybe their dogs will. Over to Danny on my north-south axis for your yeah. final point. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not sort of like hooked on this at all, am I? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Even after reading the science, we're on the fence. How do you feel about dogs and magnetism? Do you think they can see? the Earth's magnetic field? One thing's for sure, I think it'll be a while before Bear Grylls added to his survival kit. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>